Hey guys, I'm Mr. Voigt and welcome to the Smoker Builder channel. Uh, I'm a second generation fabricator and a custom pit builder right here at Smoker Builder. In today's video, I'm cleaning up some legs and getting things ready for assembly on this 1,000 gallon sled. So stick with us, you don't want to miss this. All right, we got both of our bottom legs uh, prepped and ready for our rails. Um, but I forgot one part, and that is the support for our firebox. So these two will live underneath the tank, but we still need some legs for our firebox. So now the next thing I need to do is figure out the difference from our circumference of the cook chamber versus the location of the circumference of the firebox or fire cook chamber. Fire chamber? It's a round thing on the end with a fire in it. Well, let's go over to our tank and see if we can measure from the top of one to the top of the other, and that'll be our difference. We'll come here, we'll make that mark on our layout table that's still living on our work table. Be careful not to wipe off your notes as you're building something. And then we'll be able to go right to our same location in which we just fab these legs find that difference, and we're just gonna transfer that same line right to our new, new length. And that should be the right length in line with the same leg to our firebox. Okay, so the difference between the top of the cook chamber and the top of the firebox is 10 and 7 eighths. So we have our cook chamber here. It's gonna come turned down and then our firebox is gonna start and it's gonna live there. So this is the measurement we're looking for right here. This is where we got our number. That's the difference. This will go this way. Our collector will be on this end with our stack and our skid is potentially gonna live right down here and slowly get in to our cook chamber. So we're gonna be making this leg right here. We've made this leg, we've made this leg. These are our weld seams here in the propane tank. And now we're gonna work on this leg here. All right, so here we are with the legs. We're getting, getting ready to make the smaller of the three legs that's gonna fit underneath the firebox. So I, uh, all the cross members on all of these leg assemblies are gonna be the same because they're fitting between the same two parallel rail, rails front to back of the cooker. So with that being said, we can use our initial assembly as a template or a, a pattern, if you will, and build right off of that. So we have measured out the difference in our tanks between the firebox and the cook chamber at 10 and 7 eighths. We drew that down, mimicked our radius, that generated our new cope line for the, uh, the leg. We marked that out on a, on a solid piece of two inch. And now we made those cuts, which look like this. And we're just gonna lay those right on top of our existing frame. So once those line up, Oh, let me regress here. As you can see, these clamps are on here. This is ensuring that these tubes are parallel with each other. These are gonna make a nice even edge and you can look down and see that they're lined up. Double check your ends here. Just with your hand, you can kind of feel if they're even or not. These are sharp. Over time, you'll, you'll learn to be careful, but it will let you know right away if these are not even. These are even, this feels even. So we're good to go on our, our continuous layout. So here's our leg, we're gonna tack this on. We're gonna tack the other side. Once this final third assembly is done, we're gonna take all these three and we're gonna lay them out on the, on the rail according to where we think they're gonna look good on the cooker. Two on the cook chamber and a little guy on the firebox. And uh, we'll get all that tacked up. We're gonna end up lifting the whole cooker up and sliding the, this guy underneath and then slowly bringing it down and seeing how all of our homework planned out. All right, let's get this tacked up. These are adjustable clamps, just a little C-clamp. I'm gonna, just like these, it's the same notion here. We're just gonna line up the edges and pinch things close. All right, we're gonna put a tack on there. Personal safety equipment engaged. Now I'm gonna put three tacks, because two will hinge and still move around, so I'm gonna put one third one. And these are small tacks to hold it in place until I can get this tacked onto the main rail and then we'll put a heavier tack on there. All right, there's one side. Looks good, looks good, it's flat, feels flush. 
Ready to go. We'll put a tack on there. All right, so according to plan, this should all stay in one piece and be our last third leg. All right, there's our little guy for the firebox. And there's our big guy for the cook chamber. So you can really see the difference, obviously, between the two here. But they all line up. The bottom cross member is the same. The angle is the same on the legs. They're all parallel, and it's going to make a really nice view when you're all said and done and you're staring down this thousand gallon smoker. All this stuff is going to line up and be right on the money. Very important to us. We've got to, got to be good. All right, so the next step, we're going to separate these. We're going to go to the cooker. We're going to lay out where we want these legs to live on the different cook chambers in the uh, firebox. Make marks on our rail, our two by four inch rail. And then we're going to get that up on some jack stands, level it out, square it up, lay these cross members in and tack them all in place. Once all that's welded in and, and good to go, we're going to lift it up and scoot it underneath. So stick around and watch us get this thing mounted. All right, so we have our rail pushed all the way up against our thousand gallon tank. And we're doing that so we can kind of go over where we're going to put our legs. It's, it's really up to you. I mean, obviously you want to catch the end so it stays balanced and it's supported. But as far as how many legs go, the shape of them, it, it's entirely up to you. As long as it's strength worthy and it'll weld up nicely, you're good to go. Um, so this is against the cooker and I'm looking for the weld seams on the tank itself. Now there's obviously one on the end belt caps. There's gonna be one right here. We're gonna have another at the end of this belt cap, which would be here. And then our final weld seam is going to be right here at the end on this portion of the skid. So we wanna be kind of relatively close to these three points. We're not gonna be right on the weld seam because that's gonna generate issues for our fit up we're just going to step right off the weld seam. So this one, the weld dives in for the, for the tank bell end. And on this side, it's flat for the tube. So we're going to live on this side. On this weld, it's reversed. This curves in. This is flat. We're going to put our leg on this side of the weld. So now I'll lay all that out. I'm going to move this over on the horse, set the other rail up, and now we'll start squaring everything up and getting our cross members in place. Okay, I mean, it's not that easy, but it's kind of that easy. It doesn't look too bad. And because I put that step in there, this is kind of freestanding. I don't need to clamp it down, it's just kind of in place. So when you weld this up, the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna level both of these out so they're the same pitch. They're gonna to be totally level. Then we're gonna square them up this way so they're all nice and true. And once all that's happened, we'll secure it to our forks this stuff's heavy enough and our, and our horses are heavy enough that it's not gonna move around too much. We'll clamp this down, hold it in place, check for square, and we'll start getting these all tacked away. All right, well, we have both of our rails laid out. They're level with each other. They're square with each other. Uh, my uprights, I have a digital level on here. I'm checking uh, angles as I go to make sure things are nice and plumb. Uh, it's looking pretty good, so I'm going to just slowly tack this thing together uh, one little piece at a time and check as I go. And once everything's tacked and looking good, then we'll go ahead and start welding this thing up. All right, so I've been using this digital level to kind of get myself square. Um, if I just start using a, a bubble level, it could be off, I could drop it, I could flip it upside down. This thing has a, a numerical digital readout and it just works. So as you turn it, it will tell you which way you need to go to square up. It's a little bit of investment, but boy, it goes a long way in the shop. I mean, if you can, you can lean on this thing and it's, it's gonna be there for you. So I've squared up these rails. They are, they are level this way. They are parallel this way and not diamond. So everything's looking good. I put, a, uh, put my level on all this stuff and it's sitting right at 90, so perfect. 
So now it's time to weld all this up. So I'm gonna do a round of tacks to make sure everything is in place. And then I'm gonna kind of bounce around a little bit and get my heat distributed as I put all this together. Here we go. I think that's gonna be a wrap for today. I'm the last one here at the shop. Everyone's gone home. I think one guy's at the bar, but I'm here welding. I'm to the point now where I need my friend to help me flip this over and get it in position for the smoker. So to me, that's a good stopping point. Well, thanks for hanging out with us today. I appreciate you hanging in here and watching us put this together. You know, Frank and I really have a passion for this, for building and, and having barbecue. So. We, we bring on any questions you guys have or any, any kind of uh, ideas you want to throw in there, just leave in the comments below and, and know that we're working on a set of plans to build this 1,000 gallon smoker. So you can get those plans and watch along and see how we go and, and watch this thing come together. Well, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.